<laughs> Whew. Those brownies, man, you gotta be careful when you eat brownies, you know? Especially when they got that pot leaf sticker on them, you know? Because it shows you it's been made by a stoner. And stoners forget things, you know? They'll be making it, mixing it up. Did I put pot in? I better put more in there. <laughs> Did I put pot in? Oh, I better put more in there. <laughs> one little corner will get you high for a week. And so you take that one little corner, and what happens? Oh, now you're stoned and you're holding a brownie. <laughs> Now, your, your brain tells you, no, 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 I got so stoned one time on brownies, man, I went shopping with my wife and I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's fucked up. Man. You know what I'm saying? You can't overdose on marijuana. Believe me, I tried. <laughs> you can't do it. It's impossible. You can smoke all the weed that you can smoke. You'll still wake up in the morning. Hungry, <laughs> right? I read an article in Time Magazine, right? Time Magazine, it said in order for a person to overdose on marijuana, they have to smoke 900 joints within 24 hours. Okay, look, you will die trying to roll 900 joints <laughs> in 24 hours. <laughs> Can you imagine they had to hire people to do that survey? That's the job I wanna have, right? Just smoke weed all day? <laughs> I'll be like, huh, I'm early. <laughs> Where do I go? <laughs> That's your job. Smoke weed all day. 676. <laughs> or was that 767? <laughs> Fuck it, start over. <laughs> Can you imagine, right? At the 900 joint, you're like, dude, if I smoke this, I'll die. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll just smoke half. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We were in Las Vegas once, my wife and I. This is obviously before we had children. Uh, the reason I have to put that addendum in is because the whole point of this story is that my wife and I were very, very high, real, real high. <laughs> in Las Vegas, just started dating, and we always got our pot from Grandma Helen. My wife's grandma always gave us pot. Now. This particular trip to Las Vegas, what she did not tell us was that the hospital gave her a new kind of pot because after getting uh, last rites by the Catholic Church, they gave her palliative care marijuana. If you don't know what palliative care means, and I pray to God that you never know what it means, it means you are going to die. The doctors, nurses, and specialists went, eh, fuck it, I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Give her palliative care. That just means give her nice pillows because she's dying anyway. They gave her palliative care marijuana, the kind of marijuana that they give you when you know you're dying. If you're gonna meet St. Peter, you might as well shake his hand giggling. That's the kind of pot. <laughs> it's like morphine. It's like other level and we have no idea. We're in a hotel room in Las Vegas. We each have a joint to ourselves. Awake and bake, nine in the morning, we smoke each of our entire joints by ourselves. And I'm sitting on a couch, and she's sitting on a chair, and about two hours go by before we realize none of us have spoken. <laughs> two I'm not exaggerating at all. Two hours, mouths open. <laughs> I'm not high. We were gone. We realized we have to get out of the hotel room because the walls are closing in, the ceiling's getting shorter, and the carpet's doing funny things to our eyes. We need to get out of there. Now, we can't hang out in the casino at the hotel in Las Vegas. We're both sort of famous, I suppose. Fa All right, how about this? We're both famous enough that when you're that fucking high, you don't want to be at a card table and people going, hey, you want to take a bet? Ah! That'll scare the shit out of you. We realize we have to get off premises entirely, but we don't know what to do. My wife looks at the Las Vegas magazine that they put in your room when you go to Las Vegas, and she goes, oh my God. I go, what? She goes, we should go to the Liberace Museum. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. There's been a few mistakes in my life that I wish I could take back. 
Going to the Liberace Museum is not one of them. However, <laughs> I'm going to tell you one of the worst mistakes you could ever make. Palliative care marijuana <laughs> and the Liberace Museum gift shop. <laughs> An $1,100 mistake. Everything seems like a good idea. Liberace plates, Liberace shot glasses, Liberace coffee mugs, Liberace cookbooks. Hey, let's have a Liberace dinner party. We'll invite 12 people, get more plates, and we'll, we'll plan it on our Liberace calendar. They sell everything. My wife and I are still high, still freaking out. We're like, how do we get all these plates home? They sell Liberace luggage at the Liberace gift shop on wheels, on rollers, so you can walk it back to your hotel because they know you're high. So there we are, like people on meth, just like putting plates and saucers with Liberace's picture on it, and like car shot glasses, like, can you zip it? Will it fit for a Liberace dinner party? And we walk back to the hotel, dragging our Liberace luggage up Flamingo Boulevard, 108 degrees, and there's a picture of Liberace on the side of the luggage, wearing dolphin shorts and red, white, and blue suspenders and tassels going, yeah! And we're just pulling it up the street. My flip-flops are coming off because they're melting. My wife's Uggs smell like a skunk farted. It's horrible. It is brutal, and my denim shorts are cutting into my thighs, and all I can pray and hope is that at that exact moment, a married couple drove by, and the wife said, look at this asshole. <laughs> Went to the supermarket the other night, late at night, wandered into the frozen foods aisle, and just randomly I decided to buy a chicken pot pie. I didn't even know what it was. But I figured, you know, it's made of my three favorite things. <laughs> Can't hurt to check that out. Chicken pot and pie. <laughs> I was very stoned at the market and developed the theory that any food that had the word pot in it might have pot in it. I was filling up my cart with frozen pot stickers, a couple bags of potpourri, it's a silent tea, but I figured maybe. Stoners are crafty, it's possible. I threw some potatoes in there. You say potato, I say potato. I threw some bananas in there because they're high in potassium. I threw some gummy bears in there because they just taste great when you're high. 140 bucks later, turns out no pot in that shit. When I graduated college, I was living in my parents' garage, and I'd never told my dad I did any kind of drugs. And my dad never told me that he did any drugs. He went to college in Miami in 1969. <laughs> Woodstock marched naked through his fucking apartment. <laughs> never touched drugs, right? So there's one day we had plans to go play golf, this little shitty three-par golf course. I decided I was gonna share. My dad comes in the garage and I go, Pop, I've got pop brownies, if you're interested. My dad gets real nervous and sweaty all of a sudden, and he goes, let's do that shit, baby. <laughs> I don't know why he was calling me baby. It was like drug terminology, already shooting back from the 60s. But we eat these brownies, and we drive his beat-up old Cadillac to the golf course. Three holes into the round of golf, I get fucked up. I'm not even hitting a ball anymore. I was like talking to the squirrels. I humped a tree at one point. It was just very splintery. I don't recommend that at all. And my dad starts talking trash. He goes, I guess you can't handle your shit, baby. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, maybe it hasn't hit you yet, pops. Secondly, stop calling me baby. <laughs> Freaking me out, all right? It has now become dark. Night has fallen upon us. My dad starts to act kind of weird, kind of messed up. And we're driving home. I said, Dad, can we stop at Starbucks for two minutes? He goes, yeah, baby, that's cool. I was like, Pop, why don't you just stay in the car? I'll be right out, okay? Two minutes. He goes, cool, baby, cool, cool. I go in Starbucks. I come out two minutes later. My dad is gone, and the car is gone. So I begin the three-mile foot journey home. Six blocks into my walk, my dad pulls up along real slow in the car, gets out, and hears his exact words. He goes, Ben, I'm freaking out, man. 
Then he got weirder. He was like, I felt like I was floating above the earth, and it was like a grid. I didn't know how to find you or your mom or your brother. And I said, Dad, I have a question. Can I drive home? <laughs> so we switch seats. I drive home. We pull into the driveway. All of a sudden, my dad gets real nervous and sweaty again, and he goes, Ben, you can't tell your mother about this. I'll get a fucking divorce. You can't tell your mother about this. I said, no problem, because I know how to lie like a normal human being. So I walk in. I go, hi, Mom. Good night. Here is exactly how my dad walks in the house. <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, Mom, Dad ate pot brownies. I don't want to think he accidentally killed a guy on the way home. Stuffed his body in the trunk or some shit. Three o'clock in the morning, my dad's sleeping on the living room couch. I woke him up and I said, Dad, I guess you can't handle your shit, baby. <laughs> Felt good. Felt very good. But then, cut to about 10, 12 years later, just six months ago, I was at my parents' house with my brother and sister-in-law and little almost two-year-old nephew, having a nice, lovely family time. I decided I'm gonna eat two and a half pot cookies. <laughs> Seemed like the right thing to do in hanging out with your family. <laughs> I ate two and a half pot cookies. We're sitting there in the living room, have a nice family conversation, and I begin to die. <laughs> I'm 100% dying right here. I know I'm dying. But they're having such a fun time. I don't want to interrupt the family time <laughs> with my death. I want to die quietly in the corner, <laughs> let them enjoy their time. So I'm 100% dying here in the corner. And eventually my mom notices this and says, are you okay? And I said, well, now that you bring it up, mom, I am not okay. <laughs> could you by chance bring me a drink? She's like, anything you want. I said, by chance, could you bring me a water and a tea and a spray and a ginger ale? <laughs> she brought me all four of those beverages, which I drank very quickly and then ran to the back of the house where I began to projectile vomit <laughs> into a bucket because I'm a gangster, okay? <laughs> I decided the night was done for me. It's time for bed. I crawl literally to the spare bedroom and the bed in there is way too high. Much like myself, I cannot, it is a very high bed. I am very high, I can't get up there. I'm gonna sleep on the floor right here. 36 year old man, I say to my mother, mom, by chance, would you mind sleeping on the floor with me while holding my hand? So in case I begin slipping towards death again, you will feel my death slide and save my life. And my mom did it, she slept on the floor holding my hand. Yeah, it's an amazing mother. And no kidding, my dad came and checked on us in the middle of the night, opens the door. Once he knew we were okay, my dad, without missing a beat, says, I guess you can't handle your shit, baby. <laughs> Funniest thing I ever heard. He waited 10 years for that joke. <laughs> While I was dying, I was like, great joke, Pop. Very nice joke. I just got my marijuana license. Thank you very much. Man, when potheads get marijuana license, they act like they graduated from high school. <laughs> yeah! I, I needed that marijuana license, man. Because I used to buy marijuana from a guy who was doing high school. It sucked, man. Every day I wait for him behind the gate. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, what the first bell or second bell? <laughs> People think I'm a pervert. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm inside the school playing tetherball. <laughs> I remember one time I couldn't pay him. I had to pretend I was his father for parent conference. Look <laughs> how stupid I was. He was failing math. I asked him, hey, bro, are you sure I owe you 60 bucks? <laughs> You're failing math. <laughs> oh, man, my son busted me smoking weed. He didn't really bust me, but he thinks I smoke weed. So we were walking, and there was marijuana smell. He said, Dad, your smell's better. <laughs> I used to be a horrible person before, before being on TV, before anything. I used to sell marijuana to my son's mom's new husband. <laughs> and then I would take that money and give it to her as child support. But we are, we're blessed with pot angels. 
cocaine, they got the devils. But we, the potheads, we have our angels. I was sitting at a stop sign one time, and cops pull up, and I'm trying to look around my nose, you know, to see if they're there. <laughs> and then for some reason, I noticed that there wasn't a light. I'm just sitting there. <laughs> so I jammed on the gas, and halfway through the intersection, I jammed on the brake, thinking, what if I was wrong? That's when the pot angel took me out of the car <laughs> and walked me around to the front of the car and opened the hood and, looked, and made me look in like I had car trouble. Because <laughs> when cops see you have car trouble, they don't want to have no part of you, boy. <laughs> don't get out of there. But I know pot is really good for you because my cat loves to get high. And cats are very, very fussy creatures, man. You know, you know cats. They're like women. You know, you can't please them. My cat will cry to go outside, and you'll, I'll open the door, and he'll stand in the doorway and look outside like he's shopping. You know? <laughs> and I'll tell him, do you want to go out or in? What are you doing? And he'll give me that fuck off look that women give you. You know that? But I've been around animals all my life, and I can read their minds. Oh, you want out, don't you? <laughs> the first time I got him stoned, I didn't mean to. I just didn't see him in the room. <laughs> and I didn't realize he was stoned until I watched him walk off a table. <laughs> and he didn't land on his feet, no, boy. He took that one extra step, started clawing shit. <laughs> then he got hung up on one nail and he's hanging there. He's looking at me like, I'm okay. <laughs> then he got cottonmouth or something because he, he tried to walk toward me, kept backing up. You know? Then he comes up to me and goes. I thought I was going deaf. <laughs> the fuck, are you meowing? Then I realized, he's fucked up. <laughs> so I gave him a little kitty drug test. Yeah, I threw him at the curtains and he didn't stick. <laughs> he's stoned, he's thinking, fuck, I'm flying, man. <laughs> now when I call him in from outside, I don't go kitty, 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 man. I just make a sound like a bong. <laughs> He hears that sound, he'll come running 50 miles away, man. <laughs> little tail in the air. <laughs> then he'll follow me around the rest of the night like a little cat junkie, you know. Like... <laughs> come on, man, fire it up. Come on, I want to sit in the window and look at shit. <laughs> <laughs>